Hi everybody, um, I wanted to look at farming in China. Um, this is uh, kind of one of the most important areas of farming in the world. Um, it looks like uh, it's just this area here, but this is actually about 500, 500 kilometers by maybe a thousand kilometers. And then including this, another thousand kilometers by 500 kilometers. So uh, quite a lot of area and then feeding about a billion people. So uh, I did look at India here, but we wanted to kind of focus on China. So China is a lot different um, because uh, the vastness of the country uh, and then the, you know, probably only, uh, you know, this 25% uh, or so of China is actually farmland. So a lot of it is just... Uh, you know, uh, other kinds of land. So uh, it's super important to look at. Um, I would also say that uh, the population map is super important to look at as well. You can see here um, a lot of the population is in this region and then also the farming is in that region. So farming and population kind of going uh, together here. Uh, but you can see out of Shanghai, um, but basically Jinan uh, being perhaps the farming center uh, city. Uh, the river system is also super important to think about uh, for farming so you can kind of see um, that this entire area is a floodplain uh, area um, and then also farmed out uh, pretty heavily. Um, it's important to realize that uh, China is the leader in production of many different types of foods, especially in vegetables. You can hear, see here, China is basically the leader of just about every vegetable you can think of, as well as India and the United States. Um, so that's pretty interesting. You can also see in fruits, uh, China is leading too in many categories. Uh, Brazil here, uh, actually in oranges, um, but uh, in general, uh, China uh, being quite uh, important for agriculture. So I just wanted to show you quickly on a map. Um, so this region right here is basically the agricultural region of China um, and the population center too. So you can see in India, um, the farmland isn't quite as visible, um, but in China, you can definitely see it's very uh, structured here uh, as we zoom in on the maps. Uh, but basically this whole region here being um, heavily farmed. However, the interesting thing about China is there's actually quite a bit of farming going on up in this region, uh, just north of North Korea. So I was quite surprised at this region here. We'll try to look at that. Um, you see the river system here coming out of there, but uh, but most of the farming that uh, most of the Chinese are familiar with is in here. And the surprising thing, so perhaps the most surprising thing about China is like in many of the countries that the farming area most of the country is not farmland so a lot of people maybe don't think about farming as much as they should uh, particularly in the south of china here you can see down in hong kong pearl river uh, there are some small uh, farms here these red dots and blue dots um, but it's not really thought of as a farmland area so you can see uh, here off of hunan island there's some farming there and then some farming uh, right on that coastline there so it's actually kind of surprising to see how much rice farming is done in the south part of China, actually, and not even in the main farming region. So question is, what do they farm uh, in this region? You can see some uh, rice farming up into here as well, um, but uh, not as much as you might expect. So China's crop production looks quite a bit different than India's. Um, you'll notice uh, rice is also high like it is in India, but actually corn is very significant, uh, wheat being huge. I would say that China has a more diverse um, food supply than India, which is interesting to think about. Um, you'd think that Indian food uh, would have a variety of foods, but really when it comes to production, uh, China is actually uh, maybe more diverse, which is super awesome. Um, and when you take this on a log scale, you can kind of see certain ones, but basically this is in tons. So um, it may be helpful actually not to put that in log scale, but you can do that as well. Um, but you can basically see potatoes, uh, spinach being a really healthy one, maybe uh, increase the spinach there. But uh, but anyway, uh, a lot of different, uh, different variety here that I did not see in the Indian uh, map. However, the weird thing is that uh, actually China has less exports as a percentage 
in food. Uh, so I was kind of surprised about that. Um, I can uh, zoom in here, I think, and maybe just isolate this one. Um, so you can kind of see just for food, uh, the breakdown. Hmm, that doesn't really make sense. Agriculture. Well, I guess it does. So, uh, but basically you can see uh, this data doesn't really make sense actually to me. So, uh, but here you can see uh, the agriculture global share. So actually textiles being huge in China um, and a number of other things. So actually even food kind of taking a downturn uh, in China, which is interesting. So I also saw this in India. India was uh, losing uh, some of their exports uh, on the food side as well. Here's kind of a detailed map uh, for rice, uh, but you can see primarily actually being in the south and the north here, uh, but uh, uh, that's kind of being interesting uh, just to see. Here's a quick wheat map for China. You can see now they start to be more wheat uh, in the region, uh, just kind of north of Shanghai. So this is actually the most farming region uh, again, So, but it's kind of unusual just to see. So it'd be really nice to see a map of diversity in terms of crops. Um, you see that uh, China definitely has a bias uh, in quite a number of the crops, but actually it's pretty diverse uh, compared to India. So it'd be nice uh, to kind of get some ideas here. So in terms of exports, you can see actually China has $139 billion of exports of agriculture. A lot of that going to the United States, $16 billion, even Russia here. Um, Europe, uh, even uh, Vietnam, and some other areas. So before we get into all the details, it's important to look at the climate map. You can see uh, similar to India in some respects, uh, but actually a little bit different, uh, kind of a darker green here, uh, even similar to Southern Japan, Southern Korea, and Taiwan. So, uh, and actually getting into some warmer areas uh, down in Hunan, uh, similar to India uh, as well. So, aha, we figured out uh, it's primarily corn up in this region, upper upper right area, and you can see there's a lot of corn uh, production here uh, as well. So, kind of getting some ideas about corn. Uh, so, the way I find that is I just look through commodity, and you can pick the commodity, um, and then imports, exports, uh, and then they have it listed uh, here by uh, production amount. So, China shows up pretty high uh, on the list here. Uh, it's important to look at the seasons. I showed you the season graph here. We can see uh, north and south season is slightly different. Uh, south season starts a little bit earlier. Harvest is also earlier. And then the north season uh, here. So uh, interesting to see that. Uh, let's go look at wheat really quick just because that one is super important as well. Uh, so let's see the seasons on that. Um, so China as well being uh, winter season and spring season kind of opposite and then actually October uh, through March not even farming there and then even August. Um, but you have a winter season uh, and spring season and actually India just having one season for their farming of wheat. This is another climate map you can kind of take a look at uh, comparing India and China as well. Um, let me show you population too. This population map can be very helpful. You can kind of start seeing uh, that the farming here uh, does kind of coincide with the population map as well. Um, however, farming up here, um, there's definitely more farming than population um, on that side of China. So let's take another look at this. Uh, so much of the agriculture, sometimes almost 100%, is uh, actually with uh, needs uh, water of some sort of irrigation. So the rivers become very important. You kind of see this river being very important, but a particular this river right here uh, being perhaps the most important farming river in China. So let's kind of zoom in and out here to look at this farming region here. So you can see this whole peninsula here, uh, Beijing up in here, but basically this region right in here and even Henan uh, being very important uh, for farming. And even on the south side, you can start to see uh, out in here. So basically the peninsula actually kind of drying up a little bit uh, and uh, this river here kind of coming through here so actually this also this part of this this chunk of this river here uh, Yangtze heading out into Shanghai so 
uh, basically this part here uh, perhaps uh, being uh, super important uh, right here for Shanghai. So let's take a careful look at that. Um, so basically most of that farming is on the north side of Shanghai. Uh, and you can see uh, basically right in here being super important um, for agriculture in Shanghai being uh, the most populated area even on earth. Zoom out a little bit and you can start to see uh, how the Yangtze heads off into the hills here and actually Wuhan being pretty important as kind of a uh, area for farming but there's a lot of pollution that gets trapped in here uh, from cars and transportation as well so uh, and you can see uh, basically mountainous area so it's unbelievably important how important this farmland is uh, now remember on the other map we also saw a lot of farming being done up into this region as well so let's see if we can find some of that uh, here on the map you can kind of see right in here this is probably where it is right there so kind of more hilly and trees in this area off of north korea but you can see uh, some of that farmland here and even up into here in this region here so I'm going to turn off the uh, climate classification on this uh, and then add the roads. So the roads can actually tell us quite a bit about transportation of the food. So hopefully that will load in here in a second. It'll take a little bit. If we zoom in, we can probably see. So you start to see some of that farming region in through here, right? And then all throughout here and then out by Wuhan. And it's still not loading the roads, but uh, that's fine. We'll try to zoom in here and see if we can get. All right, so now we're starting to get some of the roads. Uh, you can see quite a dense uh, road situation, especially in Shanghai and even out in Wuhan. But this is kind of being, uh, some of these roads being super important. Uh, specifically for agricultural transport. Um, I don't know if it's gonna show everything, but I'll try to zoom in here and see what we can get uh, in terms of the map. So kind of looking at just thousands and thousands of roads. So, uh, but super important area um, to think about as we kind of look at the road system uh, for the agriculture as well. So it's kind of loading here. Sorry about this. There's just so much data on this here. And then here's kind of that last little uh, north piece, just uh, kind of north and east of Beijing, kind of heading up into the peninsula. Unfortunately, the roads don't really load too well uh, on some of this uh, zoomed out maps, but uh, you can basically kind of see some of the uh, shape of the farming industry here. So quite a lot, uh, actually super important area up in the north here. So. So I talked about this in a previous video, but it's super important to understand uh, how much farmland it takes per person. So the estimate is about uh, at least two hectares, uh, two of these uh, hectares per person per year. So um, that really depends on the region. Uh, you can see Africa definitely doing a good job here um, of eating their food and producing the food. And then Europe actually being up in six hectares per person per year. So uh, if you're not familiar with that hectare stuff, uh, it's basically about a football field. So six football fields per person. Wow, that's a lot of land, uh, amazing amount. So. Uh, certainly important to look at this data carefully and I'll try to publish that as well. So before we close here, uh, I wanna just relook at this. You can take a careful look at this data. I'll try to maybe even publish it on Wikipedia. It wasn't really listed, um, but uh, you can kind of see all the variety of foods and then how much uh, production there is in tons of food. So super helpful to see this. So again, uh, here's kind of the uh, farming region. So there are some farming going on, believe it or not, out here in Western China and even slivers into here. So this would be some super interesting farms to look at. It's not that they're necessarily bad farms. They're actually pretty interesting right in the hillside, maybe with the river system, um, as well as along the coast here, some super cool farms uh, as well. Um, so uh, it's unbelievable that uh, actually these small farming areas have uh, so much influence in other countries. So you can just see 
you know, Philippines uh, population is also, you know, also very big. Uh, and then you see Taiwan farms down here and some other areas uh, near Korea as well. So uh, kind of how that fits into the uh, China farming picture. So I just been drinking water while I've been uh, doing this video and uh, just super important to take a look at these river maps um, when you're trying to find a farm that you're interested in studying. So you can kind of see up into this northern part of China here out outside of Beijing, some of these really wild rivers that basically probably should have been just a huge pond here. They don't actually go to the coast of the ocean. They actually just uh, kind of end here in the middle here, which is kind of interesting uh, to see. So, uh, but these actually head all the way out to the ocean. You might want to also take a look at the population maps in China. These are very helpful to see. You can see mostly in eastern side of China, uh, but there is quite a lot of population all over here is down in Shenzhen and Hong Kong as well. Uh, but you can see Shanghai being huge, Beijing being huge, and then basically this whole area uh, being just a lot of people. Um, this does not show up in the United States, the number of people that we're seeing here. Uh, there's just a huge number of people. Um, so it kind of raised some interesting questions. There was some farming out here in U Yunnan. So what you can see is that there's this whole area here, right? Um, and that's basically being this area here. So you can kind of see this area matching with that area here. Um, and then the soil map uh, being helpful to see, you can see mostly a floodplain. That's actually pretty unusual. Uh, having farming just I mean it's not unusual necessarily but around the world uh, a lot of the farmland is not necessarily floodplain farmland um, so you can click on this and it'll show you type of soil there um, and that's pretty interesting to see um, and actually uh, this even the pink stuff is pretty farmable as well although on the map you don't really see it as much it kind of thins out in some of those areas and especially in the satellite view um, of this region, you can kind of start to see, basically, it looks a little bit not as green, but there is certainly farming there, but this is mainly floodplain area um, as well. So kind of coming off the mountains, this is the corner of the Himalaya. So you can see the Himalaya is kind of ending here on in Kuming uh, in Western China and then the Tibetan Plateau. These are 30,000 feet, so that's quite a huge drop down into this valley here, heading into the farmland. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this study. There's a lot of details. I would definitely zoom in and take a careful look. Um, you can also use Street View. I didn't really discuss this when I looked at India, but uh, you can't get Street View for Google Maps, but you can do it through Baidu. Um, so if you do maps, uh, Baidu.com, I think you can get the street view here, um, and then you can actually look at some of the farmland maps uh, here, so, uh, and that can be very helpful uh, to see, so I definitely recommend uh, taking a look at that. Let me just show you a quick example of how to do that. Let's look at this area uh, just north of Shanghai. So you may need to turn it to satellite image just to see where the farmland is. It will kind of load up here. Um, and actually, it's been really helpful. I'm sorry, this is kind of blurry right now. Uh, but uh, looking at the uh, maps in different uh, from Baidu as well as Google and Bing and different kinds of sources has been very helpful. So you can see here, now to get to the street view, I think it's this one right here and they will show you uh, a bunch of different things. So, um, not really working right now, but uh, anyway, uh, usually it works fine. Uh, sorry, this is loading a little bit slow. Uh, it's loading all the way from Asia maybe, so. They also have 3D view if you click on 3D uh, and then you can kind of see uh, some things here, so I don't know. Uh, it doesn't work exactly the same Here, but you can kind of rotate it around and take a look at some things I still don't know what's wrong with the street view, but so anyway, um, we were looking at this region right in here um, That's super important uh, area, but basically there's so many just different areas So uh, try to take a look uh, See what you can find on the farmland um, I'm also trying to work on a farm tour. So it'd be really fun to just set up a farm tour. Um, there's basically three tours a year. There's planting, growing, and harvesting. 
Uh, so three different times you can visit the farms um, and just uh, different kind of ideas for setting up that tour. Uh, I'd like to make it a little bit more interesting than what I said there, so I'm not gonna go into all the details. Um, but certainly take a look at a particular farm, maybe near a city, so you can find this just north of Shanghai. Sometimes you have to hide about uh, 50 miles or 30 miles outside of the city just to find a farm. Um, so it looks like here there's actually no farming whatsoever. But then these regions just actually south of Shanghai um, show some farming. Uh, and then Beijing actually having uh, some significant farming uh, along here and there. So there are some options uh, to look at in terms of finding specific farms near even major cities. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this study. Uh, it's been uh, interesting. There's certainly a lot more work to do in terms of understanding what's going on with the farms. Um, let me know if you got any questions. I'd be glad to collaborate with you and talk with you about what's going on with farming uh, in any country um, around the world. Um, and take a look at some of these maps. I'll post the links. I uh, hope you it helps you as much as possible. Thanks.